We have a quorum because we have two new members. We have uh, Mary Anderson, who's uh, very thankful. She's our uh, uh, member from the Board of Selectmen. So uh, thank you very much, Mary. I, and you're now chair, too, so I appreciate it. No, no, I'm not chair. <laughs> not yet. You will be of the Selectmen. Oh, yes, chair of the Selectmen, yes. Of the Select Board. Let me do the talking, Mary. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just you're, pull the string. <laughs> and so... You know that's a huge, that's a that's a larger effort than being a selectman, and for you to take on this role as well is very much appreciated. Amen. Thank you, Mary. It's, it's my honor. And Mary's been working on housing issues for some time, and uh, Quality Williams, our newest member, and uh, uh, you as a, as as well. Can I impose on you to give us a little bit of your background? Sure. Uh, not housing, generally, but housing. Yes. Just housing. Yeah, <laughs> great. And then there was a time. No. Um, <laughs> So let's see, I was, um, I used to live in Chatham, that's where I grew up. Um, so I was on the Chatham affordable housing that when they were, um, began. So that was really great. I uh, worked a lot with Ira and Florence. They were sort of mentors of mine, if you know the Seldens. Um, yeah. And yeah, very much lovely. Yeah. And they were really uh, encouraging to get involved, especially when I was first moved back to the Cape. And then um, my husband and I moved to Harwich, um, and I joined the Harwich Housing Committee in the early, I guess it was probably mid-2010, uh, maybe around then, um, and stayed uh, through that, and then um, raised my daughter a little bit more, and now came back to the housing committee for the last two years. I just finished up my term with them and um, I joined the trust and just let that go just so I can focus here. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I would only disagree some with your characterization of forms of encouraging you. That's not how I remember your actions with me. It was more forceful than yeah. encouragement. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful lady. She did so much for the community. It's unbelievable. Thank you much, and we do have a quorum now, so we're, we're ready to go, and our next action will be to approve the minutes of May 22nd, and, and that will basically will be the three of us taking action on that. Is, uh, people read it and comfortable? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a motion then? Yep, motion to approve minutes from May 22nd, 2023. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, well, there were two abstentions, Correct. I, I gather. Okay, thank you very much. And we thank Brianna and whoever uh, and helped her do this, put the minutes together, so they're were, they were very useful. Going on to old business, uh, I know Brenda and I have talked about it a couple times, and uh, Bob uh, brought it up at the last meeting that we would very much like to hear from uh, Harwich Conservation Trust, and uh, Michael Locke is here. And uh, I did, uh, I, I want to keep my uh, promise in our discussion, um, Mike, that we're, why don't you sit at the table so you're more comfortable so we can uh, pick on you? <laughs> uh, but I, I do want to keep up. I did talk to uh, Mike and uh, ask him to join us and promised that uh, this is just a general discussion. What we're exploring, are there ways for us that we can help each other out? And uh, you know, we've had some discussions in the past, and I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, to combine housing with open space in a way that helps us all out. And uh, you know, I think, and there's other matters as well, I suppose. So this is an open forum, Mike, so we'll just uh, go for it. Well, thank you. Thank you all for the invitation. Um, so Michael Locke, Executive Director of the nonprofit Harwich Conservation Trust, the local land trust uh, established in 1988 by volunteers from all walks of life across the villages of Harwich with a common purpose of preserving land to protect water quality and wildlife habitat, scenic views, walking trails, all of those elements that, that help uh, enhance the quality of life here. We know affordable housing is also an urgent need to maintain the quality of life here in town. And as Larry referenced, one of the ways to create housing could um, include partnering between the town and Harwich Conservation Trust where uh, it seems suitable to achieve both goals of conservation and uh, affordable housing. So we're open to those possibilities. Um, I think that uh, if the property is in the right location uh, and the resources are there uh, on behalf of both the town and Harwood Conservation Trust, then we could achieve some, some common goals. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mike. I'll probably 
So, you know, I, it, we're just brainstorming today, so mm -hmm. I'm not thinking we're going to hold in with anything. But you know, I even look at the Mars Line property as maybe an opportunity to do some things on open space to help bring in the uh, expertise of, even though we haven't talked about it, and it's sort of after the fact, but because uh, Mike's been used to working with the uh, state and federal agencies and might help us, you know, who knows, funding or, or some more resources, how best use the property. I think everything's on the uh, drawing board as long as, we, as long as we talk. Yeah, whether it's, you know, existing projects like your, is it roughly 13 acres, the, the size of yeah. the March Line property that's near uh, Pleasant Lake Ave and Queen Anne Road, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as you're referencing um, design, uh, perhaps, uh, in order to preserve any sensitive conservation values on the property um, in alignment with your open space residential cluster uh, design bylaw, uh, or however you see fit to achieve the number of units that you're looking for in as best balance as possible with the resources that are there. Uh, we're open to that discussion as well if, if, we, can, if we can be helpful. Good. Uh, Bob, let me turn it over to you. Since Thanks, you uh, Mike, are, are you familiar with other land trust um, town partnerships in, on the Cape or in this, in this general region? It's great you asked that, Bob. Uh, as part of a um, Southeastern Mass land trust uh, conference that took place uh, in April, uh, there was an excellent plenary speaker uh, from... Um, well, he, he wears a couple hats. He's a member of the Stowe uh, Land Conservation Trust in Stowe, Massachusetts. He also happens to be uh, the, the director of the Division of Conservation Services with the state of Massachusetts. And his plenary um, topic uh, was the um, combination of both uh, affordable housing and conservation uh, by virtue of two different case studies successful case studies there in Stowe. Perhaps his presentation, Bob Wilbur is his name, perhaps his presentation will be helpful uh, for your group and others interested in furthering the cooperation between land conservation and affordable housing. Yeah. It's creating um, out of the box thinking um, and they've achieved some, some, some really uh, uh, great headway in regard to both conservation and um, affordable housing uh, on, on each of the sites, one of which uh, was a, a golf course. Good. That sounds great. That mm. would be a great YouTube to, mm -hmm. to pull up and, and to hear what he had to say. And to be clear, the golf course was uh, to be sold. It's not the municipal golf course, private golf course uh, in which the um, owners were um, trying to sell it on the open market, Stowe. Uh, Town of Stowe stepped forward uh, in partnership with the Stowe Land Conservation Trust to offer an alternative vision uh, than what the open market might um, uh, provide for, for buyers. So you weren't mentioning that to advocate anything? Right, just giving you the <laughs> parameters of the case study. I, it's a fascinating uh, presentation. Uh, Bob is, a, is uh, very knowledgeable. He, um, prior to his his um, state uh, position with the Division of Conservation Services. He was director of land protection statewide for Mass Audubon. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and he's been affiliated with the Stowe Land Conservation Trust for a very long time. So he, he has a lot of knowledge and experience uh, in this field. That's great. Uh, Larry, I'd just go like ahead, to go on the record as, as letting people know that I'm a member of the Conservation Trust in Harwich and mm -hmm. also a donor and believe very strongly in the work yeah. that Mike and, and your crew is doing, but that's apart from this role. Right. Thank you, Bob, for that. And uh, if no one objects, we'll let Bob participate. We're not making any decisions, so I don't think it's a factor anyway, but just, just be open. Thank you, yeah. Bob. Mm -hmm. Larry? Larry? Uh, just one question. Is anything in Stowe done physically? Is there some affordable housing that's linked to conservation? Uh, if I remember the two case studies, one is completed, I think one is in process. Okay. I'd be glad to reach out to Bob uh, and talk about the idea of uh, a visit here by him to give this presentation. Great. I, think it would be, I think it would be um, very informative. 
Thank give you. us some more ideas, yeah. some tools yeah. in the toolbox. We appreciate that, Michael. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, Brandon? Quick question. How do you acquire your lands? Through purchase, donation? Like, what are the percentages on that, or roughly? Uh, the acquisition um, means uh, varies. You know, in the first several years of the trust, um, it was mostly through land donation. And as, as we've seen uh, values increase, um, more of those acquisitions have been through purchase, mm -hmm. fundraising, um, also in cooperation with the town, Community Preservation Act Open Space Fund, and our um, state partners through the State Conservation Partnership Grant. And relative to the town's contribution, um, through the Community Preservation and Open Space Fund, and prior to that, the Land Bank, some of those projects ended up um, being eligible for the state land grant, which is helpful to reimburse um, the town portion of those land preservation projects. We hope that, uh, and it has occurred on several occasions, we're always looking for those opportunities going forward uh, to acquire these properties, if necessary, by purchase at less than fair market value often called a charitable sale because there can be a tax advantage to the seller if they're selling it at below market value. And of course it helps us in terms of our, our fundraising ability to, to meet the, the seller's uh, price. Um, another way we acquire land for conservation purposes is by virtue of acquiring the development rights through what's called a conservation restriction, which is essentially a legal, legal agreement between two parties in which uh, the landowner um, is extinguishing some or all of the development rights on some or all of the land. And, and those development rights, what's extinguished and uh, where is, is a negoti negotiating process. Um, uh, and so that's been um, a tool that's been very helpful, flexible. Uh, another element that's been helpful is the state's conservation land tax credit program. It's been utilized by um, a number of families in Harwich. Uh, right now, um, there's a backlog because of its popularity. Um, I think the next openings are in 2025. Um, there's a $2 million statewide cap, and the maximum that can be earned in terms of tax credit by an um, eligible project is up to $75,000 or 50% of praise fair market value, whichever is less. And there's an effort afoot to increase the statewide cap to five million because of the backlog and because of uh, the leveraging effect that this tax credit program has. Um, so those are some of the ways at which we work with families, individuals, landowners in protecting their lands. Okay. What are some of the factors that would make, make people eligible for the tax credit, the last topic you talked about? Yeah. Uh, usually it has to be a property um, that has natural resources uh, that can, if protected, provide uh, public benefit. Uh, for instance, uh, within a zone two of contribution, also known as a public water recharge area. Those are defined by the Department of Environmental Protection. It's available as a Massachusetts GIS mapping layer. Um, Properties within or near an uh, area of critical environmental concern, the one we have here is the Pleasant Bay area of critical environmental concern. Also, um, district of critical planning concern, the one we have here is in Six Ponds Special District. Um, land that harbors uh, rare species, those are defined by Massachusetts Nat Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program as our, uh, either priority habitat mapped area or estimated habitat area for rare species. Mm -hmm. Again, those data layers are available through MassGIS. <clears throat> those are some of the elements that uh, would qualify lands for the state land yeah. conservation tax credit program. And I think, uh, Michael, your relationship with the state is, is incredibly important, some of the grants you get through. And I'm always uh, wondering, you know, the state has been in promotion, been, uh, They've always been promoting the uh, so-called smart growth, which is kind of what we're trying to get to. Does that help the funding if, if, you're, if you're tied not only to open space, but a combination of open space and housing? Is that, does that give you additional avenues for funding? I, w I would think so. I would think so for both purposes, you know, and that's where it's more research. It's something perhaps Bob can, Bob Wilbur, 
can shed light on in his experience at, in Stowe um, because you know we're achieving multiple goals through one project. Right. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's more to learn there. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Michael? It's been short. I, uh, I have one more while I have you here, which is just, you know, uh, throw it against the wall. Uh, you know, we invited you for all the obvious reasons, but one was, and generally speaking, was to, to increase our outreach to other groups and uh, committees in town. Is there any other, we'll, well, I'm sure we'll have a discussion amongst ourselves, but there's others that you'd point to that we should be uh, talking to. Well, you know, one example is uh, a, a nonprofit that we're partnering with, with right now, and that's the Harwich Fire Association, just as an example, yeah. uh, on the 203 Bank Street property um, that was acquired from the town through the competitive bidding process. And one of the elements that Harwich Fire Association is looking at is the potential for workforce housing uh, through the renovation of the original firehouse. Um, and I, I think that's a creative approach to adding a few more units to uh, the pool uh, of housing. Um, and it, it, it can happen in a number of different ways. That's just one example of some creative thinking. Yeah. That's great. I'm, I'm sorry to bring that up because I initially voted against it because it didn't have enough housing involved with it. So. <laughs> I should have uh, remembered that. Once I lose Selectman, I just lost everything in my knowledge base. Any other questions? Anyone in the audience want to quiz uh, Mr. Locke while we have him here? I know you're very busy, especially this time of year, so I very much appreciate you taking the time. Anytime. I really yeah. appreciate the invitation. I look forward to more discussions. I will reach out to Bob. Please. And um, yeah, yeah. should I connect with you, Larry? That'd be that? good, yeah. Okay, great. Do that. We'll and do I'll it. feed, I could be on the sick right now. I'll probably pass it on to her when she's, when I could corner her. But yeah, okay. do that. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank all right. Thank you. All right. Uh, Joe, do you, uh, do you know where Jen is? Is she coming? She is uh, remote and she has dialed to. I'm here. I finally did get on. <laughs> okay, good. Hi, Jen. Glad you could make it. I, you certainly are. I yeah, I, you're here I was having some trouble finding the link, but I'm happy to be here. Okay. You're next on the agenda. If, can you give us an update on, on, where, on, on your activity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd like to see if I can share my screen. Um, I'm not sure if I have the, it looks like I can. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks everyone for uh, bearing with me as we, um, oh, actually, did I share the right screen? Yeah, you can see the presentation now, right? Yep. It's a little small. You can, okay. Is it small? That's better. Well, what I can do, is that better? Yeah. That's better. And you may need to uh, walk us through some of the key points. Yeah, that sounds good. I'll make it as big as I can. So um, thank you for letting me do this remotely. I do appreciate it. We have a new staff person starting today in our office, and I didn't want to miss her first day to welcome her aboard. So I appreciate your flexibility with this. Um, I wanted to just walk us through where we are and, and thank you to everyone. I did get a complete responses to our activity from last time, which we'll go over. And really the purpose of, of um, our check-in today is to, is to really get, uh, get everything that we need to decide or at least direction that I'd like for you to provide to me so that we can get ready for the public forum, which is coming up on the 27th. Um, and so this is a really a continuation of our working session from a few weeks ago in May. And we asked you um, as part of the exercise to imagine it's five years in the future and the plan that we're working on together, the strategic plan is not only done, but you've implemented it. And you're looking back, reflecting on the prior five years and you're very proud of your accomplishments. So we, we asked you um, if your local paper featured a glowing article, what would it say? And this is gonna help us write a draft mission um, that we will then share with the community uh, for some feedback as a sounding board. And so some of your answers, I did just write, I hope it's okay with you because I didn't tell you I was gonna specifically do this, but I just shared your answers. I'm gonna flip through these and then I'll go back to them. I have um, Brendan, Larry and Bob's kind of brainstorm on this. And so um, 
the first one here is is Brendan. And Brendan, I just wonder, would you would you share just a few thoughts that you had here with the group on what you were thinking with this with the answer to this question? So when we first started, um, you know, we'd sit in on, on meetings on different boards. There was a, a lot of conversation about how we're 20 years behind. Um, you know, we had a production plan in 2016, and I, I don't think we met any of those goals. So five years into it, I think we're on a path to start creating and preserving some housing. So the next five years, I don't see an issue with trying to get to that 10%. And I think that's going to be the storyline that we're going to be at that. And um, that was my thought process on that. Very good. Thank you. All right. So that we'll talk about these in a moment. But let me have um, Larry, if you could tell us what your thoughts were when you put this together. Yeah, I, I moved a little bit direction from uh, Brendan and not concentrating on the 10% that we're looking for. But mine was more broadly speaking of uh, can we use a variety of funding sources to provide housing for not only low emitter housing, but across the board? We know the restrictions we have uh, on, you know, MI and all that, but can we make it as broad as possible and, and look at all funding sources? And that we, uh, as we talk with Michael Locke, that we take advantage of uh, housing and open space to uh, make the best possible decisions for the community and uh, that we use the private developers as much as possible. We don't try to do that, do this ourselves. Great, yeah, that's and very I, helpful. I'm okay. And then, because um, I didn't, uh, I, I, I made this statement pretty uh, quickly. I didn't uh, like, usually I like to think, think through a little more, but it is what it is. Well, that's okay, I appreciate it. This is, we're just brainstorming here, so don't, no worries. I'm glad that you were able to submit this. And um, I can't see everyone around the table. Is Bob here today? Right here. Oh, good. All right, Bob. So do you want to present uh, what you were thinking here a little bit? Well, it was just um, thought bullets. <laughs> um, and, and I really wanted to focus on action. And I believe our mission statement should be focused on action. And I want to see shovels in the ground. And I want to see things on the planning board, uh, in the drawing board, rather. And I want to I wanna have movement um, to create affordable housing. So that's, that was my thought stream. Um, and whatever means we can do and bring together to make all of that happen, I think is exactly what we need to be doing. Mm -hmm. That's great. And now I, I know we have some, some new members, so I'm so glad, um, Glad to see uh, Cynthia, I think, who I spoke with earlier today. Claudia. And then is that is that Mary as well? Am I getting the names right? Uh, uh, it's Claudia. Oh, Jen, I'm sorry. Why did I say that's okay. Cynthia. And yes, I'm Mary. Claudia and Mary, thank you. So I know that, um, you know, your, your new members, I think this is your first official meeting, although, Mary, I think you've been attending these meetings pretty regularly. Correct. Um, so I wonder, do you have any other thoughts hearing what your uh, fellow trustees have answered to the to the question, which I'll just go back to here. W what would you make, what would make you really proud after five years of working on the trust and, and looking back? Do you, do you have anything that you'd want to add or, or anything you'd want to uh, reinforce? Please. Um, since I was in the cheap seats when you were here, I heard that question and I've mulled it over and uh, just thinking of the headline, I thought, Harwich emerges as leader in affordable housing. I mean, that would, that would be pretty wow. I have to say my favorite bullet point of my partner Bob here is the foundation that's going to give us $2.5 I like that. <laughs> okay. Great. Thank you, Mary. I'm glad you were thinking of it. Sometimes these exercises, it's good to percolate them for a few weeks. And um, Claudia, any thoughts on your end? Um, I think what stood out from hearing the others was the, um, the idea of as much um, broad housing within the restrictions that we have so that we cover um, a variety of needs. And um, 
I like Mary's in terms of being a leader. I also really like the idea of um, not only adding to what everybody put in there, especially your points, Bob, um, but a way that um, we're leading the way in terms of people being able to find uh, affordable options for themselves. So um, somehow being a resource so that other communities will look to us from a, a technology standpoint to say, oh yeah, if you, if you need something, just check out Harwich's site and you know where to go and who to call if you need help. Hmm, that's great, okay. All right, good. All right, so I think I have a lot to work on here. Um, two of the themes I'd like to tease out a little bit more. Brendan was talking a bit more about the subsidized housing inventory and reaching that 10% as part of the mission. And I know others, including Larry, but not, not exclusively, were talking about, yes, that's that's important, but we want to reach, you know, have reach broader goals as well, maybe not only be focused on uh, that subsidized housing inventory. And I just want to, you know, I'm, I'm restating what I think I heard. So I want to see if I'm, if I'm representing what your feelings were correctly. But then I'd like to see if there, um, you know, what, what each thinks. Is there, is there room to do both of those things? Or how are you feeling about, you know, your mission going forward in terms of prioritizing, you know, work that will get you closer to that 10% uh, versus doing other things like even um, housing at a higher income level, 100% AMI, or other types of housing that may not um, uh, be eligible for the subsidized housing inventory but would still meet local needs. So could someone offer um, some thoughts on that? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I can start. Um, the reason why I focus on the 10% and I've been on a couple of uh, forums where, and I've also uh, sat in, not sat in, but watched uh, the town of Orleans. They're jumping to that 80 to 200%. That's what they're focusing on, only because they're doing pretty well in that town, getting to that 10% already. But if you look at the shy list, Barnstable's, I'll just give you the percent, 7.2, Chatham, 5.1, Brewster, 5.6, Dennis, 5.1, East Ham, 4.5, Harwich and we're four, I mean, we're 5.4. Um, no one's really that close. I just think that there's work to do there. You know, there's a need for that. Orleans is at 9%. So I can understand why they're jumping and seeing how they can expand. But I think we have work to do under the 10%, and I am all for whatever we could do after that. But our mandate is to help 8% AMI or less. So that's always been my focus. Um, and I think there's just work for us to do and, and for all the towns. So um, that's my take on that. And, and go ahead, Mary. Um, I agree with Brendan. I think we'd be too spread out if we tried to do it all, and we ought to just focus on the one that we know we have to do. There are advantages to us meeting that 10% goal. And I say let's go there first, and, and then I'm with you, Larry. Let's keep going. Yeah, and, and I'm probably not as far as part of this as I was Initially, I, I agree with that. Although if we're talking to mission, you know, four or five years down the road, I do want to be sure that okay, we focus on the uh, ten percent now, but we clearly state that our overall mission, you know, priority-wise, is this priority, and the next one is be, be sure we're always thinking forward about how to provide a broad housing because we know we have needs in addition yeah. to the uh, uh, you know sixty to eighty percent of the AMI, whatever it is. So I don't want to lose that concept. I realize the priorities are what they are for a lot of reasons. For what Brenton said, uh, because of funding that's available to us is much better for that, but I don't want to lose that. So I'm not sure I'm that far apart. I just want to be sure it's stated. Yeah. Bob? I, I, I want to make sure we focus on the partnerships that are essential to this all happening. And one of those partnerships is the Housing Committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Housing Committee has a task to be looking at housing possibilities and above the 80% is, is the world that the housing committee could, could very easily be focused on. Um, so I also think that another partnership that we have to really look at building is the partnership between affordable housing and the business community. Yeah. 
And there's plenty of potential there. Right? No. So I, 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 I was just saying, I agree with both points. We already see business communities doing that and building housing for their, for their workers because uh -huh. they have no choice, basically, uh, doing that. And uh, the partnership between housing communities, I see that as also being absolutely vital. So we each have a role. We can work together. But that doesn't mean that, you know, that's part of our statement. It's part of their statement. But I agree. So real quickly, just on the partnership, um, you know, supporting the ADU by law or just getting, the, getting it out there, even though it's not really affordable, that's going to bring on some new housing. Here in the center of town, there's three units going in from renovations. So there's that business and putting the units upstairs. Uh, Pine Oaks 4, and Mr. Dillon is here today. Um, that's going to be amazing when that launches too. So there's a lot running in tandem with us. I think it's a lot of positives. Um, and to your point about the housing committee, yeah, coming up with maybe a rental assistance program that we can we can help out on. So there's a lot out there that we can do to you know, preserve and yeah. create the housing. Bob, you want just a follow-up point is that the the town, I hope is looking at capacity issues. What kind of capacity does this town have in terms from a permitting point of view to handle, how much development can it handle? Okay. 200, 288 units, or 264, 88 at a time, is a large scale project. I don't know what the capacity of the town is, and, and I hope the town's looking at that. Um, you've got health involved, you've got planning and zoning, um, you've got building. Um, there's a lot of work that's going to have to happen yeah. to make and, this go forward. Yeah. And, and the town has been trying to address that in a narrow way, or at least uh, estimating that, in our wastewater management plan mm -hmm. and looking at growth factors. But that is somewhat narrowly focused because it's based on existing zoning and some local knowledge and what may be possible. And that assumes then that zoning's not changing. Well, you know, we can't, it can change. It's, it's a hard battle. But that does give, at least it's a starting point on these discussions. And I, uh, I think, uh, Jan, one of these other points, I brought up the uh, uh, production housing plan because that should be a key item of the pr housing plan, too, when it's, they're working on that now, uh, the kind of capacity issue you're talking about, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, well, th this is very helpful. I think I'm hearing you saying this, uh, the same thing. I think I'm hearing you saying, let's focus on first the SHI, building partnerships, you know, working with the Affordable Housing Committee, local developers and others. Um, and then because this is a five-year mission, we may get to that 10% before the five years is out, and then we want to really shift gears and think about these broader needs as well. So I, I, with your okay, I can write up a mission statement along those lines that we can tweak and, and you know, work with, but I think if you agree with that overall sentiment, then we can have something like that to present um, for feedback at the, public, at the public forum. Does that sound good? It, anyone? It does to me. It does so. The alternative would be for one of us to write it. No one's volunteering, <laughs> so. And I just wanted to check in, just having been on the um, housing committee up until uh, a few days ago, I know we were working on our mission. It looks very different than what we're talking about today. So um, will that be part of the recommendation you put out on, on how that would look? And then maybe we can make sure that gets to the committee for them to discuss and potentially adopt. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, what does what are they talking about in terms of a mission? What, can you give me the gist of, of what they're focused on? Yep, um, we uh, we were talking about um, focusing on education, advocacy, um, community engagement. So trying and then create that um, you know community support, um, helping to create that resource. Um, around like if somebody wanted to come that was a big focus if somebody had a property or they had an idea creating something where it would tell people to, you know where to go depending on where they were in their planning process 
Um, but I know there was also a desire to develop and acquire property as well. It was just something that when we talked about it felt like the, the vision without that was enough. Um, so I don't think it's a huge change, but it, you know, it's a significant shift, but again, it may be very welcome. So yeah, the, you're raising some really, really great points, Claudia. And I work with a lot of trusts um, in communities that also has some kind of a housing committee. Sometimes they call it a housing partnership or it could be an affordable housing committee. Um, and typically those committees are, uh, their mission really is different from the trust. And that's, that's really to be expected just given the general nature of a committee and the committee's role versus the housing trust, which can of course own property and uh, and has has money, uh, can buy property, can sell property, can uh, obtain funding from the CPA, Community Preservation Act, or donations or other funding sources. And so the trusts are typically focused on creating units, creating or preserving units, which is their statutory role as well, um, and a little bit less focused on uh, education and providing information when there's a housing committee because the housing committee often um, focuses on that. They focus on the education, the engagement, providing information, just like you're saying. They also tend to focus, and I'm, I don't know if you want to do this in Harwich, but typically the affordable housing committee focuses more on policy, on advocating for zoning, uh, providing information to town meeting members about any zoning you know, that would promote uh, housing. Um, and so that's very natural for the committee to be, to really have that different kind of focus, a little bit less bricks and mortar. And the trust is more about, let's get stuff done, let's get shovels in the ground, we have property, let's uh, implement those visions. Does that, does that make sense? And does anyone else wanna add any, anything onto that? Uh, Bob? Yeah, I would <clears throat> like to add very clearly that we don't want to position ourselves to be telling the housing committee what its mission is. Yeah, so, it, so I can step in real quickly. So it's, their charge comes from the Board of Selectmen, and I'll just read off their, their webpage. Purpose of the Housing Committee is to work towards diverse solutions in addressing the town's affordable housing so shortage as Harwich continues to make its progress towards the 10% goal recommended by the state of Massachusetts. And then as far as our articles of organization, uh, we're, we are to meet with them you know, once a year, but let's meet with them more than that, of course. Um, and we're gonna come up and create a housing, an affordable housing plan. So we have an action plan, then we have an affordable housing plan with the committee that we're gonna submit to the Board of Selectmen. But it'll be the Board of Selectmen to really give them their charge and what right. they're supposed to be doing. Right. And, and they can create whatever they like, but I think it comes from the Board of Selectmen. And then with that said, if, we, if we're focused on 10% or less, on the 10% or more, you know, it'd be nice to have that help moving forward. And then obviously they can, venture off and find all these different programs and different funding sources to create other housing. Uh, Mary? Um, just wondering, if they're the ones that are charged with education, um, should we have them involved with the 27th, which is sort of an education process? And I don't know how we... Yeah, I think so. I don't know what our job is Please at that them. forum, never mind their Maybe, job. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be best to have a meeting. Let's let's get them the, here this, and have a have a joint meeting. Yeah, this, this yeah, yeah, this follow up I just uh, Are you uh, comfortable with inviting the conservation, uh, the housing trust, housing committee to join us in the next meeting? I or can, but my term is I don't I I let them know. Um, I mean, I could send them an email. Well, let me. Tomorrow. I can reach out to them. Yeah, it's whatever. I'll, I'll reach I, out to them. I'm allowed to do. I'm definitely. So it should be a joint meeting. Joint time. meeting. Yeah, after. Yeah. Try to get them the next yeah. time. Okay. We should be after this. I also, uh, Jan, I think with uh, comments that we've heard about the housing committee and housing trust, I would like, uh, if much as possible, for you when you write draft our mission, look at their mission to be sure that we're cooperative and not competitive. Because in the <laughs> past, there's been some competitive atmosphere between the two, the trust and the committee. And I would I desperately want to avoid that. We should be helping each other out. Uh, whatever happens, whether it's, you know, links of resources or whatever happens. So 
if you can double check, because I mm -hmm. think they have, we can show, you probably have their draft mission, but we can certainly get that to you. I don't, I don't think I do, uh, that I recall. So um, I don't know, Claudia, if I should connect with you or if there's someone else uh, who is the chair of the committee? I can send it. Uh, Liz Harder is the chair. Yeah. And I could um, reach out great. to her too if you want. Yeah, and I can certainly, if I'm, uh, again, learning my what you can and can't do, right. if I can send it to you, then I can just send you the latest version that we had Perfect. in our um, meeting for discussion. So I'll make a note. That would be great. And yeah, and you can feel free to connect me directly with Liz too if you'd like, whatever's the easiest. Sure, I'll CC um, Liz on that email. That'd be great because we need to set the atmosphere correctly going yeah. forward. And that would be great. after the form, a meeting after the form? Right. Correct. Okay. Because the form yep. comes in pretty quickly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Paul? Good afternoon. Hi, Paul. Um, Paul. Um, while we're talking about uh, different housing and uh, Paul, introduce yourself, please. And for the people. <laughs> Sorry about that. My name is, my name is Paul Halkiotis. I'm the Planning and Community Development Director. Um, while we're discussing the roles of, uh, of the Housing Trust and the Housing Committee, there's another initiative that's currently uh, underway that's, up, that's about to really start working. Um, the local comprehensive plan update is um, starting, and there's a committee of 11 that have been appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Included in the scope of work for updating the local comprehensive plan is uh, a standalone uh, chapter on housing. And the town's housing production plan has expired. And it's important for the town to have a certified by the State Department of Housing and Community Development housing production plan. So there is a sub-consultant to the um, uh, Comprehensive Planning Committee to Ty and Bond is the main consultant. And Karen Sonnenberg is the consultant that is going to be focusing on updating the housing production plan. So while you were talking about you know, the work that the trust is going to be working on and vision for the future um, and the role of the housing committee in that, I wanted to make you aware that we are just about to start to uh, work on updating our housing production plan as part of a chapter of the local conference plan. Great. Thank you, Paul. And that'll help the Bob your the capacity issues that we're talking about, I think. I'll turn it back to you, Jen. All right, that sounds good. Thanks for that update, Paul. That's great to hear it's it's all moving forward. So um, so I want to talk about you also answered these questions in your homework, and I want to share what all of you came up with and then talk about this a little bit as well. And so the goals, of course, can be measurable. They don't have to be, but sometimes people like to have in, you know, we want to try to create X number of units over the five years um, of this plan, as an example. Or we want to try to, to um, provide support to X number of households, et cetera. They can also be more general. And then we have um, different kinds of goals. Some are about what you want to use your funding for and what you want to put your efforts into. And then some of them are more about operational. How do you want to operate? And so you, thank you to Brendan, Bob, and Larry. You did answer all of these. And so I just have them. I'll show you what I did. I grouped them by just the general goals first. And so I have Bob, Larry, and Brendan with more general goals. And then I grouped the operational goals um, together with your three answers. And so, um, Bob, could you just talk a little bit about the goals that you offered here? Right. The, the trust with the community is, is the number one goal in my mind. We have to make sure that we have the trust of the community and that the community knows that we have their trust uh, in mind, first and foremost. Um, the second specific goal is the, um, to have 200 units actively in process within three years. Um, an, uh, an additional 150 units should be on the drawing board in process. And I can't quite see the last one. Cooperative the cooperative relationships, relationships um, between those groups that we're already talking about the Housing Authority, the Housing Committee, the Comprehensive Plan process. That's, those, are, those are my goals. 
Great, thank you. My thoughts All right. So what our goal should be. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right, Larry, how about the goals that you offered here? Well, I think it, in some ways they align with some of Bob's. I, uh, the more general goals, I thought we should uh, work to discuss a broad support for additional housing in Harwich. We have a lot of discussions, a lot of open meetings on, on that. Uh, we, should, we should be able to measure these results by surveys to document what our housing needs are. Of course, we're working, as Paul said, the housing production plan. But we need some more data to, I think, firm that up and then show what percentage of these are, that we're meeting. Uh, and I also want to be sure that we're, we keep uh, equity in mind, I guess, that housing is available to everyone. We should, we don't state that specifically, but we should be uh, paying attention to that just in the world we live in. Uh, and then operational goals, uh, yeah, I mentioned I, Oh, I have those on a different slide. Uh, I'll have them on a different I'll slide, Larry. That. Okay, good. Yep. Okay. All right, very good, very good. And so, Brendan, your overall goals then here. I mean, mine are really in the next couple of months kind of goals. I mean, obviously the action plan with you, I think is very important. Um, I love the forums, um, that, especially when that's coming up. I think that's the best way to get, in, you know, to get the community involved um, and have that partnership growing, just like Bob said. Um, and then capitalizing on our current owned property, whether we sell or do something else with them. We do have some property that, um, you know, we have to work through and see what we can do with that. And then obviously uh, the last one is creating the uh, RFP for the Marsline property. Yeah. Great. So I'm more like in the next next four months interested in what happens there. Sure, you're focused on kind of the next immediate actions, yeah. but that, but it also indicates your you know some of your general goals as well. Yeah. So I'm curious um, before we get into the operational goals, I'm curious what your your thoughts are about the goals that um, Larry and Bob and Brendan put forward, um, uh, Claudia or Mary in particular. Um, if you have any others to add or any thoughts on these. Um, I don't have anything to add. They look great, and that looks like it's a nice direction to be going in. So, and, and I felt the same. I thought it was a nice uh, balance of some long-range things, and I, I like Brendan got right into what we want to do in the next uh, four months, and they they seem to gel. I didn't see anything mm -hmm. among the three that was at counterpoint right. with one another. Yeah, and I love the fact that we have the balance here. The fact that. Bob, you're thinking broader than I am, which is great, because you know, if you just lock in on one thing, you won't see what's around you. So I think it's a great compliment, especially off the new members, so it's great. All right, this is, this is good. So what I'll do is I'll work up a few goals based on what you told me. Um, I'll probably, you know, I'll, I'll aim for three to five goals. Um, so I'm gonna be kind of combining some of these. Some of these things will move into your immediate actions rather than goals. So you won't see like the action plan, for example, that will be, that's basically what we're doing. So by the time the strategic plan is done, you'll you'll have that. So this will be slightly different, but, I'll, but if you trust me to stick with the spirit of what you're saying, and I'll make sure that the community knows these are things that I crafted for their feedback um, that have not been fully vetted by the trust yet, but we really just wanted a sense of the direction to go in and get some feedback. Is that, does that sound all right with folks? Yep. Um, sounds good to me. Sounds great. I, uh, very okay. good for uh, not only, <clears throat> excuse me, your approach, but also I, I'm very comfortable with going out in public discussion on items that we haven't decided yet. That's the way it should be. So the more, yeah, I, more discussion exactly. we start at the beginning, the better off we are. That's right. And we're really just looking for reactions and feedback and advice. Okay, good. So um, I'd like to talk. Oh, we skipped. A, I'm sorry. I forgot about the operational goals. So um, why don't we get into these? Uh, Bob, Brennan, and Larry all uh, offered some ideas for operational goals. So Bob, why don't you uh, give an overview of these first? Well, having a full committee, it's great to have a full committee around this table and to have regular meetings as needed, um, not just as needed, but on a planful basis. Um, that, that's with sufficient frequency to be able to accomplish the goals, I, I think is really important. Um, 
regular outreach to the select board as well as other relevant committees, I think that we have to take on the responsibility of being spokesmen for the trust as we go to the other boards and say, here's what we're doing, here's what we're in the middle of, here's what we can't figure out, here's what we really need help with, but here's our goal and, and uh, that kind of thing. So, so that there's a back and forth. That builds trust, I think. We expose our vulnerabilities and, and let them know that we don't know it all. So I think that that's critical. Um, keeping the public informed and engaged. I think that that also brings me back to the vision statement that I, I just want to come around to for just a minute. In my mind, the vision statement excites, invites, and unites. And, and I think that a vision statement for this trust is going to reach out to the community and excite invite, what's the third one? Ignite. Unite. 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 <laughs> Who was that? Secretary of Energy? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's forget that. So that was, uh, that was the next thing on public in, in, informed. Uh, the front end meetings with time for public comment. Um, I think that the, the board, the select board does that on a regular basis. I would love for us to have that. I would love to have that kind of an invitation to the community to come forward. Let's deal with questions and opinions right on the get-go. And then main maintaining strong connections with the Cape Cod Commission and local partnerships. We've got some great local partnerships that we can connect with that are very committed to the issue of affordable housing. Great, so I'm seeing some themes of transparency as well um, in, in some of these. Would you, would you agree with that? Absolutely. All right, that's great. And then um, let's see, we've got Larry next. Can you speak to these, Larry? Well, I can. I, I followed Brendan's lead on my first one. That is to concentrate on the Marceline property and to move that as quickly as we can. Uh, I again go back to the housing production plan and sort of setting our guideposts of what we talked about. Uh, and then the, we spoke to uh, transparency, but <clears throat> well, I also said we should not be able afraid to use all the resources available to us, whether, available to us, whether that's town resources or consultants, everything, anything we need to keep the project going. And then uh, the others are sort of uh, very broad, but uh, document outreach efforts to others. I don't think it's enough to discuss. We've got to be sure we're, uh, we're documenting what we're doing, and that's public knowledge of those we're, reach, we're reaching out to. And in the same way as public discussions, we should have uh, that well understood that we're meeting with people and have that publicized so they know that we're open and available for, for discussion. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, and Brendan. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, the action plan, we've already talked about that. Um, you know, what's changed since, you know, in the last couple of years, we were without a town planner and a housing advocate. So just having the two of them on board, uh, Brianna and Paul have been amazing. Um, that to me was probably the biggest thing that really is going to help our operations. Uh, the meetings to Bob's point, uh, whether we do twice a month, once a month, we've always had a once a month meeting in the first three years in the last year. Well, last year and a half, it's been um, twice a month. So depending on what you want to do there. And, um, you know, CPC operation-wise, updating them of our progress. That goes back to Bob's point about communicating with the other boards, especially the one that will give us funds. So, um, and they have a simple request every year um, on how to update them. And we fell short a couple of years on that. So I'm thinking next time we can really knock it out of the park. So, uh, if, yeah, if I may just comment on one of Brenda's uh, statements that uh, our meeting time, I'm, I'm comfortable with once, once a month if uh, I'm also comfortable then with uh, requests to meet between that time. So I think as a, as a committee, if any of you get to me and say, we have an item we really need to cover in the short term, I'd like to reach out to you all and say, okay, we need to schedule a meeting in the next two weeks. So we have a 
we maintain our, our standard once a month, but I want to be really open if something comes up, you know, housing committee or whatever. I, I think uh, I look around the room, I think you, you're all re willing to meet sooner than that, and we can schedule that within, you know, 48 hours, right? And meet open meeting law, so. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if we'd be better scheduling twice a month, and then if there isn't enough to have a meeting canceling. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm better if it's in here and I, blocked out yeah, as I, opposed to I, yeah. trying to. I, I agree with that. The challenge I've had in the last four years being here is that the open meeting laws, you know, a yeah. month will go by. So the, every we, two weeks, it's yeah. fresh on your mind. I, I, think right. it's, I think it's a better way of doing it. And I can make it every two weeks. I, you know? I, I you can. can. You can't. That's fine. You know, with, with summer coming up. My, my concern is summer. I'd, I'd be more comfortable if we started that in September. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we can just, modify. Yes, we could change it as we like. Just yeah. because you know people are busy in the summer. Yeah. Right. And the farm could be hard. I know. I got yeah. grandkids coming part of that yeah. time. So. Okay. We'll we'll continue that discussion. Okay, Jen. All right. Uh, that. that die, die yeah. Fast. That's great. Thank you. And we'll have more time to talk about how things are operating, but it's good to get this, these discussions started now. And we're not going to talk about the operations in the public forum. You know, we really want to get a sense of policy and, uh, and priorities with the, with the group. So we'll talk about that, uh, you know, further down with you. All right. I did want to talk about these development sites. So part of the public forum will be looking at these sites and um, oh, now I'm remembering. I think I was supposed to take one of these off of the list. Can you just remind me which one I missed here? Taking off. Can you scroll, can you scroll down? So the Arbor House. You want to take off Main Street, Arbor House? Yeah. That that one. One. I knew I messed that up. I just kept the same slide from last time. Okay. So, um, so what we what we'd like to do is give each table, um, and there'll be a station as well. I'll talk about the form in a minute more specifically. But we'd like to give folks the um, you know where these sites are, a little bit of information about the size of them, and that kind of thing, and then have a discussion around priorities um, and what they might envision on these sites. Now, some of the guidance I'd like from you is, do you want me to frame it that you're already thinking of the Marceline property as your top priority and you're working on an RFP, planning to issue that at the end of July? So that's really already decided as the top priority to get moving. Um, but I want to make sure that you're okay if I characterize it that way. Yeah. I mean, I am. Yeah, yeah, I think the Marceline property would be the top one. Other properties have challenges as far as whether they're in zone two, vernal pools, what have you. It depends on how much of a discussion, but we, I think Marceline property, Sisson Road potential, um, and, um, you know, Orleans and Depot, I was getting confused, Road, um, that might be best. But the Depot Street and um, has challenges, and so does Oak now, now that we figure that out. So I don't know how much, you know, we want to talk about that, but the Marceline property is most important. I, I would think we concentrate on that in this meeting, and that yeah. the others just be a, a concept of future actions, because I'm afraid we'll lose okay. the whole point. So what I could do is just talk about Marceline and say there are these other properties out there, but the trust is really focusing in on Marceline. I don't even need to, to really show this if we're not going to talk about, you know, all of these sites. I can just focus right in on the Marceline property and we can run a, you know, 20, 30 minute. We'll look, I'll look at how the time breaks down, maybe 20 minutes on envisioning you know what what people would like to see or what they'd be open to seeing for the future of that of that property and it would just be you know rough concept ideas nothing nothing too precise and i can frame that um does that sound like a better approach than asking them about all those properties i agree the only thing is i i would still give that information on those other properties but maybe just make that by by the way these are other properties that could be uh, discussed later just to get any reaction. Mm -hmm. I can speak to any questions on any of those properties if yeah. needed at the meeting. So. Good. Okay. All right. 
Jeff. That sounds great. I'm happy to frame it that way. And then we can do more of a deep dive into Marceline and we'll focus the exercise on that. But I can start out in the presentation just saying there are all these properties out there that the trust uh, that the trust um, has ownership of. Uh, and the first one um, that they're really focused on is is the Marceline property. And I'll I'll give a little more background about that. Um, I'll Brendan, if I have any questions, I'll run them by you just to make sure everything is 100% accurate. But I'll go a little deeper than just this this one um, image or slide. Does that sound good? That'd be great. And then Jen, on that slide you have up right now, did you get that off the phase one environmental study? Is that where you? I think it? so. Um, Joe had sent me. Joe Powers had sent me a bunch of documents. Is that is that not a good one to take it off no, of? No, I, I, that's the that's one I don't have. Want. So I would love to have that. Um, oh, okay. Find, if it's in the phase one, I'll find it. Okay. Yeah, he had sent me a bunch of files, and I, I grabbed this. I think it was from the phase one. If you can't find it, let me know. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Jen? Jen? Yeah. She said yes. Oh. Uh, can I just do a side bar for just a minute with Paul? Paul? Yes, of course. On, on, Fine on with me. On this drawing, there's a paper road. Does that paper road uh, impinge upon the development potential and is there some way to get rid of it I haven't really looked at this uh, this is the first time I've looked at this um, I think my short answer is no I don't think that it's going to um, impact uh, the development of the property if if one pass if there's parcels on both sides of it that the town owns um, we technically own to the center line of each parcel so we we own it so that that paper road is is part of the group of parcels that um, make up that mass line property very good thank you very much thanks Jen all right great um, and then um, just last, and I, I know you have other things on your agenda, so I think we can wrap up after this slide. Um, I just wanted to go over what we talked about last time is the way we're designing this, uh, this forum on the 27th. It will be at 6.30. We'll get there about an hour early, me and my staff, uh, to set up. It'll be at the community center. And, um, and really, we're just getting feedback on some of the things we talked about, but I'm going to get into a format that tries to bring together what, what we've been talking about, about the mission, the goals, and then in particular, the Marceline property. And we'll do both. Um, we're going to do a hybrid based on your recommendation from last time, where we'll do some boards around the room where people who, you know, who maybe don't have the inclination or the time to stay for a full breakout group discussion can just give their feedback on some boards and then and then leave after the, you know, after the presentation. The presentation will happen close to the top of the meeting. We'll give people a little time to come in and register, get settled, get some refreshments, and then probably about. 640 or 645 we'll do the presentation and then people can who want to leave can go around the room to the boards that we'll have printed and on easels and we'll have post-it notes for people to write their feelings they can leave after that and then the folks who want to stay for more in-depth discussion at the breakout groups um, we'll have each of you stationed at a table to facilitate and you'll just lead them through. We'll have some discussion questions and it'll be very broad and we'll have some materials on the table. We'll have, you know, basically here's a draft mission. This is some of the highlights that we've been talking about for our mission. What do you guys think of that? And we'll do the same thing for goals, uh, minus the operational goals. As I said, we're gonna focus on what are the priorities for funding and your effort over the next five years. And then we'll have them look at the Marceline property and do some visioning. So you'll probably be in those breakout groups for about an hour. We, you know, we'll do probably, um, we'll break it out something like 15 to 20 minutes, uh, you know, maybe 15 minutes on the mission, 15 to 20 minutes on the goals, and then the remaining 20 to 25 minutes, if I just added that up right in my head, uh, on the Marceline property. And then after an hour, we'll come back 
you know, y'all be in the room together at different tables, but we'll do group report outs where we'll just hear some of the highlights and we'll want you all as facilitators to give those report outs. Here's some, you know, a three minute recap of what my group talked about for the last hour here, just some of the highlights. And then, um, and then that's it for the forum. And then we'll, you know, folks can mill about if they'd like, and then we'll break down. So how, how does that sound just in, in general? Yeah, sounds great. Sounds uh, good. And I, I will miss this meeting. I have a long-term plans to spend that week in Scotland. So. I, <laughs> oh, I'm that's gonna, right. I think you told I'm me gonna, that. All right. Yeah. Can everyone else take it so that we'll have the the four of you then? Yes. 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 So be well covered, mm -hmm. but. Great. I plan and to then um, the is I Brianna said, is Brianna here with you guys? I can't she, see that end of the table. She's ill today, so she is not. Uh, we have Joel. Oh, she. Uh, Joel is. Uh, here in her stead. Hiding. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hiding. <laughs> well, I just want to get a, a head count on who else will be there to help facilitate it. Will Brianna be able to be there? Uh, Joel shaking his head yes, so we assume so. Great. Okay, good. So we'll we'll have five, and then I'll have one member of my team. So we can do six tables, and I I generally walk around and float around, answer questions, make sure everything's going well. All right, I think that is it. Other than I just wanted to, uh, you've seen this has not changed from last time. This these are just the next meeting dates that we've already talked about. Um, we've got the forum on the twenty seventh. And then we'll meet again, uh, this time remote again, the, just the way I'm doing it now, uh, July 10th. And then we'll be, re and at that meeting, we'll review what we learned at the forum. And, um, and we'll talk about revisions. Uh, and then we're going to be creating the draft plan, the first draft in the summer. And we'll meet again mid-August, so August 14th. And, uh, and then we can review that first draft of the plan, make revisions. August, September, and then we want to meet with you again uh, September 11th. So all of these should line up with your regular meeting dates. Uh, and then at, at the end of the process, we'll present in person the final draft plan uh, on the 23rd. And, um, and we can talk about who's invited to come. I don't know if you want to you know, invite the select board or what have you. We don't need to make those decisions at this moment, but those are the dates that we have in our calendar. Uh, Jen, could you uh, email those to uh, Brianna? Just be sure she has that those days so she can absolutely. Uh, send to us. Yeah, absolutely. I will. All right, good. Well, that that's everything. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my share. And um, I'm just hoping we. Uh, unless anyone share. has any questions for me. Well, I'm just hoping we didn't scare your new employee off. If she's listening to this. <laughs> oh no, I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay. Great. Uh, next is a uh, discussion relative to uh, uh, Jen on contract, and she's left, but she doesn't need to be part of this discussion. Uh, Joel, I, could you join us to give some uh, moral support to this discussion? Uh, <laughs> there, this is a broad agenda item, but I, I want to cover two items on this agenda item. One is discussion for uh, let me, let me start it differently. After Bob Dolan and the uh, cohorts gave a, a presentation last meeting, when I met with Brianna, I asked if, is there a way or is it possible for us to, to help fund some of the Pine Oaks uh, development? Because that's an obvious benefit to Harwich in creating uh, affordable housing. And uh, I'm informed that it is, and, and I'll let Joel go to the details, but it looks like, Joel, if, we, if I got your discussion right, is that because we are, you know, a separate trust, uh, the uh, Pine Oaks group that Bob is uh, here representing, and it can apply for some funding uh, in the same process that CPC uses, namely um, put your submission in with, with amount and justification, and we can consider it as a trust to see if we can help them. Joel, did I get that? Uh, kinda. Kinda? <laughs> is my official response. So if I could pick it up from there. Um, That's why and, you're here. And as Larry and I have talked, and I think as Mary knows, and for those of you that I served with on the trust, um, I'm going to address the topic as a hypothetical, um, and I'm going to make references to hypothetical scenarios. Um, you folks can deal in, in the specifics of potential 
applicants that may or may not be in the room with projects that may or may not yet be before the town. But as you um, go through your next step with your consultant on an action plan and you have your form coming up to really re-engage the community, uh, based on Larry's question, I would encourage you to also think about the concept of how will you, as a fiduciary, as a, a trust that sits on wealth and property, so to speak, or treasury and property is probably the better phrase, how do you want folks to come to you? Uh, do you want folks to come to you, and how do you want them to come before you? And so one of the things that um, is contemplated in this agenda discussion this afternoon is impacting upon existing contracts. So from a procurement standpoint, Jen Goldson or J.M. Goldson Associates comes to the town, um, to you folks through the town under a Chapter 30B uh, contract and procurement. It's a standard supplies and services contract. Um, I would argue as the Chief Procurement Officer to, for the town that it is well within the scope of the current contract that the town has with J.M. Goldson on an action plan that she may also be able to develop for you folks uh, an application form and process uh, that relates to that. So in other words, you have a plan of action. That plan of action may include the disbursement of funds that you folks have to applicants. How do you do that? You work through your strategic consultant. And so when the question came to me is, could the trust give funds to a, um, a, a proposal uh, and I say that because I know that Mr. Doan and others would agree with me that uh, at present, the town was aware of a process or a project known as Chloe's Path. That project is not yet formally before the town in any measurable manner. That is to say, they have not applied for a comprehensive permit. And so even though we're aware of it, it doesn't exist from the municipality's uh, viewpoint. The same could be said of other projects that we're aware of. It's not yet before the town, and I think that's important to recognize because you may not want to accept an application until you know that there's the likelihood of something to happen. You wouldn't want to agree to release funds only to have something not then materialize. How do you recapture them, et cetera, et cetera? Because you are still, in the end, a subset of the town, and so there's any number of accounting um, measures and procedures you'd have to go through. But to the question that your chair broached, can the trust give money to projects in the community that support housing? And the answer is unequivocally, yes, absolutely. How it is done is up to you folks. So could you do it in this case? Certainly. However, at present, there are no formal projects uh, before the town yet that you could contemplate an application. Okay. If you engage the consultant in the manner that I've suggested, by the time that comes together, you might have a nice dovetail of uh, events and confluence of actions. Okay. So we've had a couple of developers come to us, and there's never been an ask. So I think this application process would be a great way to administer that. I think that's a great idea, and then to Joe's point, um, they're not ready to ask. That's the issue. So maybe Chloe's path is something we can engage in. Um, but yeah, thanks for that, Joe. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mary. What what exactly would have to be um, would would any such project have to have completed with the town before we should? What's that? Is that getting the? Uh, Building permit? What? What? Not necessarily happen? the building permit. Not necessarily a comprehensive permit for subdivisions or developments. Um, and uh, one of the the best ways I could sort of talk about this is again draw upon things that have ap actually happened in the past uh, and things that we may envision happening in the future. Uh, that is to say, I talked about Chloe's path. That's known to the town because they were seeking what's referred to anecdotally as a friendly 40B. So to do that requires the endorsement of the select board. Before the select board would consider that friendly 40B, they appropriately assigned it to staff, starting with me, and then I similarly sent it to staff for everybody to review it and to earlier points about if we're going to bring, if the town is going to see a new development come in and it's going to increase population and services and all that, 
What does it mean for the town? And so, as you may recall, the board at that point had a public discussion. Very careful to say, not a public hearing, but a discussion with the public at a public meeting. And so that was tangible. If as part of that discussion, they had made reference to, and as part of our funding, we're gonna seek funds from the Affordable Housing Trust uh, Board of Trustees, then this group could have been similarly engaged. Hey, if this is the, what they're proposing to the town, what do you folks think about the, 40, the friendly 40B, but also what do you think about the concept of surrendering some of your assets to support their program. So it doesn't have to be a formal application, but in that instance, it was they, the potential uh, property developer, were contemplating a friendly 40B, and so there was a structure in place that allowed the town to react. Um, that could be the same for any other programs that are out there, such as Pine Oaks uh, Phase 4. Um, additionally, if I could go further, I would say to me, as a former member of your body, the question that I think you would want to sort of address to for yourselves is, what's the equivalency? What is it that the applicant, so-called, is looking for in funds, and what do you, through the town, derive from that? Um, it could be a simple equation that for every number, for every unit that's added to the subsidized housing inventory, or shy list, you'll release X dollars. So one unit equals. Um, because that's, I think, how you folks want to approach it. If we're going to give up the funds that we've acquired and the funds that community preservation have given us, what's in it for the town? And you folks are dedicated to that proposition of uh, adding to the subsidized housing inventory list. Okay, uh, uh, Mary? I'm, I'm still not clear because the way you described it, the town knows both about Chloe's and Pine Oaks. And yet I got the impression you said we shouldn't, at this point, be trying to make that kind of deal. Would we grant the money with a provision that they got the building permit? I, I'm not sure about the sequence. Sure, and so what I was trying to get to, and a, a fair point to call me out on it, Chloe's path was a thing, insofar as they purposely went before the select board and said, we are thinking about going for a 40B comprehensive permit, but we want it to be friendly. We want to do it as a local initiative program or LIP. There's a process at DHCD, uh, Department of Housing and Community Development, whereby both parties have to go through that process. That's what I meant by tangible. Now, it didn't go uh, yet to that level. The town voted not to proceed with the LIP, and the property owner is still contemplating their options. Um, as it relates to Pine Oaks, and, and I, I hope it's taken this way, that the, the proponents of that understand that I've said that there's nothing there yet. What they're talking about is um, a development of property, but the town is not aware formally of how many units in that property. You then wouldn't be aware of those units, how many will impact upon the subsidized housing inventory. We wouldn't know the answers to some of those unless and until the property owner, so-called, and or the developer says, we want to pursue a LIP, friendly 40B, we're going to get in front of the select board. So once, once your administration team hears about that, we start doing things, a a actions at the staff level. We send it to all department heads, and that's not all relevant, that's all department heads. If this proposed development, as we see it in the documents provided, were to come to fruition, what does it mean for the school department, for police, fire, water, DPW, uh, health, you know, uh, planning and zoning, what does it mean, what should be, we be aware of? Um, in that scenario, you folks would be added, even though you're not a department, um, and the housing advocate would be added as well to say, if they go forward with this friendly 40B, this LIP and these units, what do you think about that? So for Chloe's path, it would have been when the town was discussing through the select board, which is the way it has to go, a prospective LIP or friendly 40B. The same thing, in my opinion, would happen or should happen when the, uh, the folks related to Pine Oaks Phase 4 are ready to present to the town. That's why in the meantime, you can develop the application. 
uh, Mary's that answer because I think uh, what, I'd like to, what I'm hoping we do today, uh, based on Joe's comments, are um, with existing uh, Goldstein's, uh, J.M. Goldstein's Associates contract, we can uh, broach that agreement with uh, Jen to develop a policy to, uh, to uh, look at application when they come to us. Am I correct? Absolutely. So we could, yeah. so if we can get a motion to do that step, and then all the things that you're talking about, Mary, that would come when we get actually get an application. But if we can get uh, Goldstein to look at the uh, what help us draft a policy, we could consider some forms to answer some of your questions. Mm -hmm. So we're prepared. When I'm assuming that, I mean Bob will certainly bring us back at a certain time. I assume, and probably others, we should be nice for us to be ahead of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So does anyone care to? And you don't know uh, until a developer really creates his budget, of where he's getting right. his funding source from. Because yeah. if he's so going to do a 40B comprehensive permit, right. they're going to give that breakdown and how they're getting to their funding. Right. Um, you know, you're talking years of development right. in yeah. three different phases. Right. Just to use Pine Oaks Four as an example. Does anyone care to make a motion? You go ahead. Uh, thank you. And in that motion, the other salient point was. Um, I'm no longer part of your group, right. therefore I have no right whatsoever to take your funds. However, um, if Ms. Goldson is agreeable to expand the contract, there may be a requirement to allocate additional funds. So um, come back we'd also be looking that the trust is willing to have the town rely upon a funding source from you folks. Yeah. Uh, Bob, do you uh, wish to comment? And then I'm hoping someone will make a motion. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Bob Doan, um, uh, on uh, living in Harwich. Uh, one of the things that um, Pine Oaks uh, did originally was back in 75, they had no money whatsoever, yet they had the vision to do this. And at that time, they sought out, and I believe it was the state, gave them some seed money to start the process to get, whether it be a consultant or whatever, to pull together uh, their concepts. Now, we didn't need that this time because we now have our own seed money, uh, so we could do quite a bit. But it might be something to think of um, that uh, someone might come to you with a concept mm -hmm. and say, I just need $10,000 to get yeah. started. Would you have, do you have faith in me type thing to do it? And it may not work out. Um, and as I said, I think originally it came from the state uh, offer that seed money or maybe even the county but that could be a little different from what um, Joe's saying you know with, with doing that full application to the town or whether it's a um, permit or, or a building yeah. uh, seeking. Thank you Bob. That may though be pertinent to how we uh, what our draft policy looks like mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. you know of or what our starting point is consider funding. Does anyone care to make a motion of uh, moving ahead with this with with, with some oh, town funding possible. I would, Brenda. I'll give a shot at this. <laughs> give a shot. Motion to approve expanding J.M. Golson's contract to include help illustrating application for direct funding from developers. With use with, of funds. With use of, with, with, with use of funds. With use of funds. That gives us opportunity to expand the funding if necessary. Second. Is there a second? Any more discussion? Thank you. I think that puts us in a better All position, favor. Joe. All in favor? Aye. 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 No one against them. <laughs> now, the second part of this discussion that I left this relatively open was uh, we're all anxious to move ahead with the RFP on the Marsline property, and that's got to delayed a bit because there's a lot of towns very busy. And I wanted to uh, discuss this about potential, of, and this will take a new contract, about discussions with uh, J.M. Goldstein about a new contract to draft, help us draft a RFP for the Marsline property. That would be an expertise. Brianna and Paul have already worked on it some, so we're not going in and asking you to start from scratch. But uh, I think they do bring a lot of expertise in these types of RFPs that we could uh, make uh, use to our advantage and get this on the street as quickly as we can. So. Uh, my reasoning on this, as I, Joe and I talked, is that I think we're all anxious to move this down the road. Mm -hmm. And so it's additional, some additional funds to make sure it happens. Uh, I'm, I'm, my push is that we, we do that. Any other discussion? Mary? Would that have to go out to bid where that's a new contract or where, where we already have her? Can it just be an extension? 
Um, Go ahead. Read yes to the procurement, and I don't believe the extension would be allowed under the procurement laws. Um, however, the way that I've, I understood it is you folks are obviously looking to move forward on a development of land RFP, uh, which is a construction type of um, procurement. Um, the concern goes with that is, is fairly standard. Uh, in addition to J.M. Goulson, there's any number of purveyors out there that could assist the town in that regard. So what the town would ma imagine is that we could assume that the cost is no greater than $50,000 to start, and then that allows us to solicit three quotes. So a request for quotations is what people anecdotally call it. And when we solicit for those quotes, if we get one response, that's sufficient to proceed. And so I do know that if Brianna were here, she will tell you that she has also, in addition to working with J.M. Goulson, uh, has been working with uh, Mass Housing Partnership and Laura Schufeld uh, and all of the folks that are in that space. So I would say it, in procurement terms, uh, we never concern ourselves with the brand name. Uh, the example always is we don't buy Kleenex, we buy facial tissues. That may happen to be Kleenex if that's how the bid goes. So seeking uh, consulted, consultative uh, strategy support for um, development of land for housing is fairly standard. We wouldn't ascribe any name to it yet, but the process there. But that would get process. And again, yeah. any direction we would need, we the town would need a vote that authorizes the use of uh, trust fund money. Okay. In the end, it still comes back to you for procurement point correct? Uh, correct. The town would still have to do the procurement process. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? I'd, I'd like to move ahead with this so we consider getting, getting help to get this down. So we have to go for an RFQ first. First, but that would be relatively quick, I think. Correct. Okay. I think that it's not as much quicker so, than an so RFP. So take what Brianna and Paul have started, have Jen put her eyes on it. Or whoever the consultant is, put their eyes on it and then, come up with a draft right, RFP. Right, comes to us, we draft it, goes around again, and then falls to Joe in some capacity. Got it. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? It does. Again, my, my, my discussion with Joe, I just want to be sure we're, we're doing all we can mm -hmm. to move ahead. I mean, you're talking a 60 to 70 page document that I've seen RFPs for just vacant land. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big task. Yeah. So if I may, what I heard was there was going to be a motion right. to do such a thing, including authorization to use funds. Right. Does anyone care to, <laughs> Brandon, you want to make that motion to authorize the use and with authorization to use funds? We'll take that. I'll make the motion. Sounds good. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? I, I appreciate you all. And Joe, I appreciate your help on this. Because, again, we're all anxious to move forward. Move all, forward. In yep. all in favor. Yeah. All in favor. Yes. Thank you, Claudia. Okay, then. All in favor. That was unanimous. Aye. Aye. That's why I need help. Aye. No. He's mouthing it to me, so I'm just back. Absolutely. And, and, the, and, the, and the system works beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you. Is thank there, you. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, Mary? One, one more thing before Joe gets out of the hot seat. What about the environmental issues? Do we have to address them before the RFP? So there was a phase one environmental study done, and it's 250 pages. So there's been some work already done. There's a couple of um, items that may not even be a factor. So we can weigh that option. Um, yeah. But I think... Need to take a look at this first. Okay. Yeah. I, further, if I may, um, it's my understanding that there was a prior vote of a prior board, uh, prior trust, um, to use funds for that purpose. So one of the things we do have to rely upon with the consultant is to say we have the environmental study so far. This is what it says. We're a bit developing an RFP. What other things should we be doing concurrently, if any? and then the consultant will give us direction on that. Great. But you've already given authorization for, the, for that process and those funds. Great, thank you. You okay, Mary? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, Joel, do you want to, uh, next on the agenda is a, uh, an update from uh, Brianna. So, Brianna. yes, generally. How, however, she does send her regrets. But um, she did send us the update herself. Yes. And, yep. and, and yeah, so we, we have, have do report. have. And I did speak with her earlier um, and um, I think it would be beneficial for all parties if you move that topic to your next agenda. She did say to me that the materials that you have 
She is relying upon both the Provincetown and Wellfleet examples of uh, buy down and support pro programs, um, but wanted to engage in a dialogue with you folks about next steps. Um, okay. Otherwise, um, that's it. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, more discussion, we'll wait for we'll postpone that to the next meeting. The last is uh, discussion future meeting schedule. Uh, we'll have that you know, in normal time. And uh, Bob, you raised a good point we discussed is uh, I want to be sure that we, uh, that we get uh, items that you all wish to be on the next agenda. And let's do this, uh, send those items to, uh, uh, to Brianna. Do you have any topic you think should be on the next agenda? Okay, and what I do is I meet with uh, Brianna a few days before this meeting, just go through them as we did this time, and then we send them out. Do you look at them as draft, and so you have a, a shot at anything else? That's correct. And I think, uh, uh, I think Bob, to your point, we'll be sure we add to the next one the public comment section. So there's, there's a, this publicized that we'll, we'll open up that as well. That's a good suggestion. Mary? And I thought tonight under um, Selectman's report, I can, or public comments, one or the other, remind people that the trust meets. Is it the second Monday of the month? Is that the? Uh, I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. And remind is it the them second or third? The third. It's the third after the look. Yeah, it's been the third Monday. And, and the forum, yes. And but the, and the forum. Too, so. Yeah, third, yeah. yeah. Could you all give me the dates of the next meetings? I took the meetings from Jen, 7, 10, 8, 14, 9, 11, are those? That's going to be it, and then the, uh, the forum. And the forum on the 27th. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, all right, perfect. Do that again, 7, 10, 8, 14. And 9, 11. Okay. 9, 11. At 1 p.m. And, uh, as well as the 6, 27. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'll, I'll announce that tonight and encourage people to come in if they want to speak yeah. or even just listen. You know, Do we, and, and Mary, I very, excuse me, go ahead. Go ahead. Is that something that we're putting in the paper, or how are we advertising that? Which? The 27th. Oh. Uh, we haven't put it in the paper. It's been on our, uh, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. It's on our website, but I don't think it's been, in the, been publicized in the paper. We probably should do that. I don't know, Joe. It was in the paper? It was? It was? It was. It's on a lot of, oh. it was a lot of, of uh, I know the uh, like old timers and those groups had them on their uh, social bit. I was so. just thinking of the Chronicle or something, but yeah. It was in the Chronicle. Yeah, Ms. It Powell was. has been advertising that um, since right before town meeting, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so it's good to hear that it's been out there, but um, it has been announced. It's been announced at several select board meetings. It's on the website, so um, we'll keep doing the, uh, the effort, but it's out there. Okay. Has, has it been in the Chronicle, Joe? Uh, my understanding like is I, that it is, but yep. I'll double check with Brian. I'll double okay. check too. You, is it that was, where you I saw it? I saw it. Oh, in the okay. okay, great. Okay, great. Thank and, you. And Mary, your comment, I very much appreciate you bringing anything you want from this board back to the selectmen, okay. so they Will know do. what we're what, what we're up to. Anything we need to discuss? <laughs> Bob is looking at me. <laughs> Can I do a quick update on oh. websites that you probably will go to a lot? So um, <clears throat> DHCD, the Department of Housing and Community Development, if you try to find their website, it has disappeared. And the reason being is now called the Executive Office of Housing and Livability Communities. Oh. So if you go to the website, the Executive Office, blah, 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 it's formerly known as DHCD. So that has changed. Executive Office of? Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. As so opposed to non <laughs> As opposed to non-livable house. <laughs> right. And the, and the website has changed a little bit, so navigating through it is it can be a little complicated now. But um, it has changed. It, so you, you'll hear a lot of reference to DHCD. It's going to be a, on all the paperwork as you, as you look okay. through everything. Everything from the articles of organization to the amendment, it's everywhere uh, when you have this discussion. So they recently changed. I just found that out last night when I was doing this. Uh, but this, this has happened yeah. because the, this is now a cabinet position. Right, that's why. Okay. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. Yeah. Housing. That's good, yeah. Housing okay. is a cabinet that, okay. position. I, I should know that. It's been in the mm -hmm. paper. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Claudia? Um, is there... Um, and I can ask you offline too, but is there something I should be looking at or reviewing or making sure for the next meeting just so I'm prepared? 
I know it's my first. I'm going to turn it over to Brendan because she's yeah. giving this. I mean, nice, obviously, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll read the. So, I mean, I mean, so yeah. this is my mind over the last four years. What I thought was important information, hard to find stuff that I've just been pulling in. So I just did a quick table of contents, and I kind of worked. Mine used to be all color labeled, and it made no sense. So um, there's 25 items in here. I broke it down into <laughs> the basic table of contents, shy list information, funding, property maps, owned properties, and then not owned properties, meaning properties like Earl Road, Arbor House, 70 Willow. You're going to hear those names. but it, So there's information in there. There's deeds. Um, so... During a meeting, you'll see me constantly flip through because to you have to read the information. There's no way to keep it all in your head. There's just too much. Um, so, like the shy list, there's information there, and it's good to see that list when you see everyone's at 5.1 to 6 percent. You can see where Harwich is. So, you can find it all online, um, but it's it's kind of like a cheat sheet during during the uh, meeting. I find it really handy. So. Yeah. So maybe I'll just read up on the Mars line and then for being uh, prepared to run groups at the 627 meeting, yeah. just be yeah. familiar with as much as I can, I guess. Yeah, it's great for you to do this. Brandon. And the environmental yeah. study is online. I made the mistake of hitting the wrong key and I printed it out by accident. <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing five copies. Yeah, I, this whole I, thing. I was thinking I was hitting something else and it went uh, crazy. So um, this is my personal copy. <laughs> uh, this in uh, but uh, like I said, just go through this, and you can use this as you see fit. You can okay. mix things up. I make notes everywhere. Yeah. I try to give as, as much clean copies as possible. Um, and then one that I think that's kind of important that we talked about, you know, you know Bob mentioned this, is the weekly, um, well, not weekly, but just maybe the monthly uh, property summary sheet. That's going to have all the properties, and you'll see it between one and two. Um, all the properties, properties that we've been discussing, um, everything from expiring shy list items uh, to the Marceline property, eminent domain, information, it's all there, and actions that have been, milestones that have been taken. And at the very bottom, it's going to be our balance to date, so we know how, many, how much dollars we have, okay. um, and then you know what's projected from CPC from the last town meeting. So just a quick cheat sheet that could even be put on our website, maybe? Please. That'd be great. Right, yeah, yeah. So they're all right there, and you can see the last, you know, three or four milestones that we've done in each of the properties. Yeah. So, we, we have, to right. thank you very much. We I have a new uh, finance director, and I did uh, tell her last week that I wanted to give her a month or so to settle in. Mm. But there are some funds, including this one, that we'd like a regular update regular. as to. What the number is. Correct. So good. We, we know Thank you, Mary, for that. Yeah. That's good. Right. Exactly. So I, I still owe her a couple of weeks, but I will uh, <laughs> yeah. follow up on that. Let me, uh, let me suggest, too, to call to your point is I think we all, I know I have done some uh, uh, web searches on RFPs from other towns and stuff, and I think it'd be appropriate when those come if, uh, to share those. You know, they're an interesting reading, and it's, uh, they're not this size but there's more than i want to print but they're uh, you know yeah. so mm -hmm. i think if if y'all you know if you're looking at stuff and it's, and it's interesting information share share them yes okay. 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 yeah mm -hmm. okay great thanks okay. any other kind of, joe you have anything more you wish to uh comment on bob you've had your time i guess I <laughs> for the record you asked um very quickly first of all i was remiss in not congratulating and thanking all of you for, for being uh, willing and able to serve. As you've said before, there's um, the best way to demonstrate that the town is making progress is by the presence of the five of you on this body, and that's fantastic. Um, so number one, congratulations for that, because that makes all the difference in the world. And then secondly, I think somebody in this room should be congratulated um, for their participation as a community member and kept very busy while her... Um, Babysitter, perhaps, was at a meeting. So yes, yes. <laughs> she did a wonderful job by um, keeping busy. <laughs> and that would be Emma Lowney directly behind you. I love it. Uh, Who's locked in with her. She's having, a great, mouse, uh, she's having a great time here, too. Yes. <laughs> when she heard she could be on the computer for two hours, she was like, she this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm there. Good trick. How old is she? I'm just 10. 10. 
Well, it's nice to have someone here that knows what they're talking about. <laughs> she did help with the binders. <laughs> <laughs> she she had fabulous. She helped me organize. <laughs> She's not paying attention either. But, no. uh, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you.